from the centenarians of Okinawa Islands, I, like it's in Japan. Uh, those of you who don't know about this island, this island holds the record of being a home of uh, maximum number of centenarians uh, per capita in the world. And uh, according to a very interesting case study, uh, the secret of their longevity actually lies in their diet. And their diet is actually um, like very much like, like the diet has like too much taurine in it. And that's the parallel between this story and my research. So uh, what is taurine? Uh, so um, taurine is basically a uh, um, semi-essential micronutrient. It was discovered by two German scientists, uh, Frederick Reidman and Leopard Gamelin, in 1827 from uh, ox bull. And that's why it, it names as taurine from Taurus. Uh, taurine is basically, uh, uh, it's basically present in animal-based product and it's not or almost negligibly present in plants. And the reason is uh, the, the enzyme that is responsible for taurine synthesis pathway. So if you see here, the say, uh, cysteine sulfonic acid is required to convert uh, taurine from cysteine methionine pathway, and this is actually deficient in plants. And that's why plant-based diet has almost negligible taurine content. The, the story of actually taurine function is even more interesting. So it was discovered in 1827, but for 100 years, nobody knows you know, what is the function of taurine. So, uh, uh, like around the like uh, when the World War II ends, uh, there was an improvement in socio-economic development. People like uh, the society get more affluent, and uh, people need to go to work. They need pet foods, so industry introduced these cat foods. And what they identified that the, with the introduction of these cat foods, uh, suddenly cats show blindness, and they are like hitting to the walls, and you know showing blind uh, behavior. So, so society fund the research and uh, they hired you know, scientists to see like, what is happening. And scientists identified that actually this cat food diet uh, lacks a very essential nutrient in, in that uh, cat food, which is taurine. And they supplement that uh, uh, cat food with the taurine and they identify, like they, they, they figured out like a 100% recovery of this phenomena. And that study was published in Science in I think in 18, 1975, uh, almost 150 years uh, after the discovery of taurine. And 10 years after that, another st uh, story published in Science again, uh, in 10 years showing the, uh, the importance of taurine in myocardial failure or cardiac functions. So first we basically checked the correlation between taurine and uh, like normal chronological age. And we identified there is a positive, uh, there is a very significant uh, correlation. Next from the Epic Norfolk study, we identified that actually uh, humans with taurine deficiency have uh, like a very significant correlation with the age associated diseases. And it's not only that, if you, if you see like, uh, if you see other uh, metabolites related to taurine, like hypotaurine, they also show the similar kind of trend. Then what happens in the healthy condition? We all, we all know exercise is good for us. So uh, this is the data from Hedding uh, Rakish Labs, uh, our collaborator, and he actually identified that even like different uh, kind of people, whether they are sedentary, natural bodybuilders, endurance athletes, or normal sprinters, even if they do a short bout of graded exercise, they show an increase in their taurine level. So all these things are, you know, correlations, and we, we know that, you know, um, correlation doesn't always mean causation. So the question is whether taurine deficiency is just a passenger or a driver of aging. So to test that, we use multiple species model. First, we confirm whether the similar trend is present in mice or not. And after that, we started supplementing uh, mice with taurine with 1,000 mg per kg body weight of dosage. And we identified both in females and males, there was a significant increase in their median lifespan. In females, it was approximately 12%. In males, it was around 10%. We also, because the enzymes uh, uh, responsible for taurine synthesis is actually very much conserved in at least in multicellular organisms, so we, we see what happens with the taurine supplementation in other model system. So as you can see, uh, taurine supplementation, at least in higher doses, increased lifespan in C. elegans, but there is no difference in, in the yeast. And that is possibly because the enzymes, like 
it may be responsible for the, uh, the difference in taurine metabolism because the enzyme responsible for the synthesis actually uh, diverged way before in the evolution, evolutionary tree. So, so we supplemented mice with taurine, and this time we used two different doses, 500 mg per kg body weight and 1000 mg per kg body weight, and we identify like a slight reduction in their body weight, and maybe that is due to the reduction in gonadal fat pad, which was observed in previous studies as well. And uh, here you can see, uh, and I, I love this data a lot, because you can see that there is like almost 1.5 time increase in body, uh, bone density in these mice, uh, not only in the vertebra, but also in the skeleton. We also performed the stiffness analysis by femur maximum load and by three-point band test analysis and the, both the uh, bones from the taurine treated mice show positive effect. We also test uh, working memory via via maze and the taurine treated mice were, uh, they performed way better. For glucose homeostasis, we performed GTT and ITT and as you can see in both the conditions, uh, taurine treated mice were healthier compared to the uh, control treated mice. So in summary, uh, we identified that taurine supplementation makes an animal healthier, uh, maybe by affecting like multiple hallmarks of aging, and uh, at least it show a lifespan extension in worm and mouse, and we also know that it associated with uh, taurine deficiencies associated with poor health in humans. But the missing piece in this study is the randomized clinical trial, which is required uh, before somebody should start taking Red Bull. So I would like to acknowledge all the collaborators and funding agencies uh, for this work, and it's, it's amazing like how collaborative the aging field is and how helpful they are for conducting this study.